one in a monkey suit. So mm. I, I, I dug this up. I'll make sure I got this right. I think it's 1988 is when they did this study. Yeah, 1988. So I don't know if you have actually ever heard the, the proper stats, but the Wall Street Journal was like, okay, we've heard this before then, like this back in the 60s. And they went, okay. So this, this was just, I guess, the conception that a lot of investing decisions random. were was random. essentially yeah. random. Which, I know, if you're looking at the crypto, crypto world right now, you could probably say like, oh, goddamn, there's some random luck that you need to be having here. Mm. Even though some of it maybe you know about it coming up, but man, some of it's just random shit. And then, you know, just because something is a makes sense and probably does have value, doesn't mean that's doesn't actually mean reflected be, yeah, in, in, the, price in the actual price. Or the market. Um, but anyway, so in essence, they were like, okay, we'll we'll get we'll get some gorillas, we'll we'll throw throw darts at the or monkeys or whatever it was, we'll throw darts into into like the share market sort of wall, and we'll just invest on in that. Now, they looked at it. So after they, like they 20 actually years. got gorillas. They actually got gorillas or monkeys yeah. to throw darts at a thing, and they're yeah. like, okay, cool, we're gonna we're gonna put investment money on that. And after I think it was 20 years, and then they stopped. I don't know if they continued it anymore. But basically, the Dow Jones. So this is obviously in the states. The Dow Jones returned 10. Point 1%, 10.7%. Professional investors, 6.8%. The monkeys, 4.8%. So, okay. but they said uh, it was um, your regular average show, 42 <laughs> So <laughs> it was like, you, you're almost, unless you're like a professional, and even then it was like not much of a marginal difference. You're better off just being a monkey and just throwing your darts everywhere and just picking whatever the hell comes up in, in random luck and going through. Mm. I almost feel like with cryptocurrency, it's basically that, especially with all the alternative new stuff coming out. Your best bet is just be like, help, put a dollar in everything and just see what happens mm. as opposed to putting maybe your money where you think it's going to go well or yeah, throw darts. I, I think, and I've been talking to you about my my stock fund in the last couple of weeks. Mm. So I think if I just put on my, uh, my gorilla suit back in a year ago, just throwing some, some darts, being like, oh, I'm going to put it on that money. I just left it there. I would have worked out better. And any everything that I've done so far, mm, yeah. so yeah, just, just yeah. amaze me. Yeah, there's the, a difference. So there's a couple of things from that. One is you'd you'd maybe get from those stats thinking, oh, maybe I should invest uh, with professional investors because they're at six point eight percent. Problem is, they take your money. They take they take they their do, commission. Take... So even if you do that, yeah. you're probably going right back to that four. Well, yeah, yeah. When people like think about um, you know professional broker and they're like, oh, you know, but they achieve this much. But then you actually convert the fact that they take 1% or 1.5% out of your earnings. That's a massive amount mm. over the time. And so, sure, it might look like 6.8%, but what you get net returns actually much, much less than what you started off, which then obviously conflicts with your compounding like amount of money that you can take over that time. Because 1% over that whole time is humongous. Yeah, so, for sure. Um, but no, other, you know, talking on the crypto, I just want to make sure that I don't forget to talk about this. So the fact, I think, that crypto is so socially determined like it's not even anymore about like real market it's not like the market's deciding what this is or it, maybe other words the market here is not like true financial acumen it's whatever the hell people think about it that's what it, it mm. is and that's what normal share market is but it is i guess more intertwined with actual financial revenues and profits whereas with crypto companies it's like just whatever the hell people think about it that's what the price is going to become and so elon musk just recently went on to saturday night live today like literally today a couple of hours ago and in preparation for him going going into it everyone was thinking he's going to promote dogecoin he's going to pump up dogecoin dogecoin was uh three cents shy in australian dollars to a dollar okay it was three yeah. cents shy so it was like pumping up until a couple of hours before some person started putting up like oh like big big hedge funds oh we're shorting dogecoin oh we don't think it's going to go down what happened down 25% in uh, three minutes. <laughs> Literally, as the show started airing, it was just like, boop. And if you look at the graphs, it's straight down. Um, but the equivalent in the other uh, parabolic, Ethereum. Ethereum was uh, 2000 So I had a mate at work who bought Ethereum at $2,000. And he bought it again at $2,300. And it like weaved in and out. Do you know what it hit today? Over $5,000. Yeah. It literally just went like, boop, was straight up. But one of the other ones that I never really knew about until I started looking into it more was gas fees. And the fees of actually doing the exchanges of money. So here's the other craziness. There was uh, basically like a competitor to Dogecoin that started coming out. There's a few, but this one's a little bit more prominent. It's called like uh, Shib Shiboshi coin. And it's just got a different type of dog on the coin, right? Okay. And it went massively up. But the price, the cost of exchanging the token back to another coin, or the cost of selling it, outgrew the growth of the coin. So it went from like, you know, you could change it for whatever money, 
but like I was just re le really recently seeing it. So I was like, oh, I try to like exchange the coin to get my profits, but now the the cost of changing it was two hundred dollars. So it's like, well, I'm gonna lose money just even from this growth that I've just had on this coin. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, Jesus, shit just sounds so ridiculous. Not infinity pool level. Yeah. Not infinity money, but I was like, man, this this is if you. My advice, seriously, if you in the, if you want to get into crypto well, and you don't care about losing money, I would say pull every like upcoming ICO in the next month, close your eyes, put on a monkey seat, and just throw some darts at the wall and be like, <laughs> pick those, yeah. put your money in. Like you're gonna do better than freaking doing anything 